very good evening students uh, in today's class we are going to discuss some of the case studies related to the legal business environment so already in the previous videos i have uh, uh, shared lot of information about the indian contract act agency act sale of goods act okay consumer protection act so especially today we are going to discuss some of the case studies let's see one by one so the first case study is a forced to b enter into a contract at the point of pistol what the remedy available to b if he does not want to be bound by the contract see first of all before going to going through the contract there are uh, certain types of case studies will be given by the uh, faculty members for example uh some case studies will be given like uh, they will give you questions they will give you case study also they will give some questions so in such cases what you supposed to do first you have to go through the case study thoroughly once or twice you have to read the case study first then before going to attend the examination before going to examination hall first you make sure that you know all the content in the syllabus so okay before going to attend the examination first you be thorough and uh, make sure that you know each and every topic in the syllabus for example in your examination if they are going to give unit 1 and 2 in the sense you sh you should be thorough about the unit 1 and 2 content why because whenever the case study is given first you should be in a position to trace out the particular given case study is related to which unit okay first you have to make sure that the particular case study has taken from this so and so unit and also you should be in a position to trace out which topic it belongs to for example for example i am telling you there is some case study is given once you go through the case study if you comes to know that the case study is belongs to business communication especially uh, barriers of communication in the sense the the particular case study is belongs to business communication unit number 1 okay so in the business communication unit number 1 one what are the contents are there you have to recollect okay then in the barriers of communication first you should know what is called barriers of communication what are the different types of barriers of communication okay then you have to go through the case study then you have to correlate the given case along with the concept what you have studied with help of that you have to write your answer okay so sometime case study will be given with the questions uh, for such cases you can start to answer the case as it is and uh, okay whereas sometime the case study will be given then they will ask you to analyze the case so if the case study is given in general in nature what you have to do first you have to study the case study properly then you have to analyze the case okay you should <clears throat> you should do like a role play that means you have to assume in some cases they will ask you uh, if you are a manager how will you make a decision if you are in that position what kind of a decision you will make so like that they will ask you so what what you have to do first you have to go through your case study fully then you have to assume yourself in a given position then you have to solve the case sometime if they ask you to analyze the case what you have to do you have to read your case study once or twice then you have to put your own subheadings like introduction introduction observation sometime you can apply swot analysis okay so uh, even you can write a con with a conclusion also so the case study will be given uh, in a uh, maximum three or four ways one is they will give along with the questions for that you can directly start to answer for that whereas second type of case study they will give you a case study then they will ask you to analyze the case okay then you have to put your own subheadings then you have to analyze the case sometime they will ask you to do like a role play you have to assume yourself as a uh, given uh, uh, you know given uh, role then you have to solve the case sometime some you know uh, some case studies will be given without any kind of a question they will not give you any questions they will not ask you to analyze the case what you have to do you have to read the case and uh, whatever you observed whatever you learned and then uh, whatever you you know understand with help of the case study correlate with the concept what did you study then you have to solve the case this is a uh, uh, this is a way you have to solve the case 
but in the legal environment related case study you no need to write like one page two page three page whereas if it is like uh, some other theory related case study in the sense like uh, mpob like managerial behavior organizational behavior okay then uh, what uh, organizational behavior principles of management some other theoretical subject in the sense you can solve the case with uh, three pages or four pages whereas league for law concern you no need to write in elaborately so uh, you can write the answer as per the question and uh, as per the uh, uh, concept what is available in the case study for example now see this a forced to b enter into a contract at a point of a pistol what remedy is available to b if he does not want to bound by the contract so first you read the case study then trace out which topic it belongs to in the legal business environment we have five units in the first unit we will be discussing about the indian constitution then various code functions of court various law kinds of law and punishment and then management legal system business management system business law whereas in the unit 2 will be dis discussing about indian contract act 1872 then in the unit 3 will be discussing uh, what uh, sale of goods act agency special contract act then uh, what as indemnity guarantee warranty so uh, related to this i already have posted my videos okay in the unit 4 we will be discussing consumer protection act partnership firm then transfer of property act okay then uh, what as um, okay major the yeah performance of contract in the unit 5 we will be discussing about the ipr but the given case study is related to unit 2 indian contract act so now what we have to do now you have to recollect the points whatever is related to indian contract act okay so first question is what a forced to b enter into contract so uh, already we know what is called contract act right what is called contract so all the agreement which is enforceable by law is a contract so how you have to write answer for this all the agreement as per the given case study all the agreement is enforceable by law is called as a contract since uh in this contract in this given case uh there is a absence of pre consent because already we have seen one concept that pre consent under the title of essential elements of contract okay so already we have seen 10 points under the essential elements of contract in that there is a one uh, point is called uh, pre consent so what do you mean by pre consent so as per the indian contract act you should not force anyone to enter in a contract if you are going to do so then the particular persons can suit the case against the opposite party that is called as a pre consent okay so here a forced to b so a is forcing the word itself is mentioned that a is forcing b to enter in a contract in the in front of the point of pistol so what you have to do the remedy is the solution is the given case is given the given cases coming under indian contract act 1872 especially under the topic of essential elements of a contract so as per the indian contract act 1872 we should not force anyone to enter in a contract but here the a is uh, forcing b to enter in a contract at the point of the pis pistol so so this is a contract which is called as a void this is a contract which is called as a void so what do you mean by void contract so from one, uh, sorry vo voidable contract so what do you mean by voidable contract from one person point of view is called as a valid from uh, whereas from another person point of view is called as a void okay for example uh, a forcing b to enter in a contract because of the force he entered in a contract okay later on if b would like to file a case against a in the sense he can do okay that time from a's point of view is called as a valid from whereas from b point of view is called as a void Okay, that is called voidable contract. So you have to understand from one person point of view is called as a valid, from whereas from another point uh, person point of view is called as a void. So in this given, given in this a case case study number one in this case study, so there are two concepts you have to explain. One is essential elements of contract pre consent. The next one is voidable contract. Okay, number two, I mean under the case study number one, uh, B. C orally offered to pay A an auto mechanic rupees fifty for testing a used car which C was about to purchase from D. Okay, so read the case twice. So C is a person 
who are willing to offer to pay a a is a who is a a he is a auto mechanic uh rupees he c would like to give the c is offering 50 rupees to a for the purpose of testing a used car for what purpose he is testing a used car because he wants to buy a second hand car from the d okay so what happened the a the auto mechanic he agreed and he tested the car c also paid a rupees 50 in a cash for his service so what what is the exact situation c entering in a contract with the a a is a mechanic so he agreed to give a 50 rupees for testing the car for what purpose is testing the car to buy a second hand car so what happened d is a person who is the owner of the particular car okay so now here c paid the amount to the a what he has agreed to give now what the question is see the question is the agreement between c and a is express or implied number b is a executed contract or executory contract or is a valid void voidable and unenforceable now question number a what is a is a express contract and implied contract so what is called express contract so how you will give a solution first you have to write a meaning of express contract the contract which is entered either in oral or written format that is called as a express contract okay so here in this given case study they have clearly mentioned c orally offered orally means what express contract so what is the answer number a the given case study is coming under express contract the reason behind as per the indian contract act the contract which is entered either orally or on written basis that's that is called as a express contract so the given case study coming under express contract this is answer for number a then b executed contract and executory contract so what do you mean by executed and executory when both the party have completed re their respective promise is called as a executed contract then what is called executory contract yet to be performed when both the party yet to perform their respective promise or any one party yet to perform okay so in this case study uh, what happened c orally offered to pay i mean c is orally offered to pay uh, a 50 rupees then he has given a money he has given a money the auto mechanic he tested the car okay then the c also the offerer and offeree who is the offerer c who is the offeree a so as per the promise the offerer has given a money to the offeree even the offeree have completed the work so when both the party have completed the respective promise that is called executory contract right i mean executed contract right so in the given case study b what is the answer since this is a contract is called as a executed contract the reason behind is both the party like the offerer c and the offeree a a mechanic have completed their respective promise so this is called as a executed contract okay then c point c is it a valid contract void contract voidable contract or enforceable contract so what is called valid contract the contract which fulfill all the essential elements of the indian contract at 1872 is called as a valid contract then what is called void contract Uh, at the time of entering in a contract it might be considered to be valid but due to some reason it's considered to be void for example india entering in a contract with russia at the time of entering in a contract might be the valid but due to some reason they could not able to execute a contract right that is called void so voidable contract from one person point of view is considered to be valid from another person point of view is considered to be void that is voidable contract then what is called unenforceable contract the contract which could not able to enforceable due to some technical error technical defect for example uh, tad check or the deviation in the word and numbers in the check or the sign is not matching with the uh, particular owner of the check so these are all the things is coming under unenforceable so this is a contract which is purely valid why because c orally approve orally entering a contract with a a so the both the party have completed the respective promise right so this is a valid contract so i hope so you could able to understand the case study number 1 so again i'm telling you 
number A answer is, what is the A answer? So, since the contract is coming under Indian contract 1872, so especially in the title of essential elements of contract, free consent. In the given contract, there is an absence of free consent as well as this, this is a contract is also called as a voidable contract. Whereas, why? Because from one person point of view is considered to be valid, whereas from another person point of view is considered to be void. Okay. Whereas C, uh, then case study number one, B. So in this already told you the answer is the express contract. Next one is the executed contract. C is a valid contract. This is the case study solution for number one. Then see here the case study number two. Are the following offers valid? Are the following offers valid? You know what is called offer under acceptance. Even I have a given a material uh, related to offer and acceptance. What is called offer? What are the different types of offer? Specific offer and general offer. So general offer in the sense where the offer is given to many person. Whereas specific offers in the sense where the offer is given to only one particular person. For example, I want to sell my car to Mala. So the, I would like to buy my car only to Mala. This is called specific contract. Whereas a specific offer. Whereas I want to sell my car. For that, I have uh, posted an advertisement in OLX or Cooker in the sense. This is called a general offer. Could you even understand? So now we should know the meaning of a concept first before going to solve any kind of a case study. Not only in law. Whatever may be the case study, you should know the concept. Unless otherwise you know the concept, you should not able to solve the case study in an effective manner. Okay. So number one, a, uh, a government store a garment store gave the following advertisement in a newspaper. Special sale for tomorrow only. Men's night suit reduced from 200 uh, rupees 200 to 100. Okay. First of all, this is a contract. You have to see whether the given case A uh, subsection 1 is coming under what are all the topics. So, the given case is coming under offer. The concept is offer. So, as well as what the question they have asked, are the following offer or valid? Now, tell me whether this, uh, the particular offer is valid or not. Yes, it's valid. Why? Because the garment store is giving an advertisement in a newspaper, special sale tomorrow only. Okay, tomorrow only. That too, especially for men's suit. So, what kind of offer it is? It is a specific offer. So, in your answer, you have to mention specific offer. The given case study is coming under Indian contract at 1872, especially it is an offer. It is called as a, since the offer is valid, especially it's called as a specific offer. Why? Because here the offer is given especially to the men's, that too only for tomorrow. So, it automatically is called as a specific offer. Okay, this is the answer for subsection number one. Then subsection number two, P says to Q, P says to Q, J will sell you a camera. P wants three different types of camera of various prices. So here, this is a contract, it's a little bit confusing, right? Because P says to Q, J will sell you the camera. What kind of uh, offer it is? Why? Because see here, this is called crossed offer. This is called crossing crossed offer because I'm not entering directly uh, with one person in a contract. I am I'm not offering. See, in the previous uh, example, we have seen like uh, uh, one person is offering something to another person. That is a direct offer. Okay. Whereas here, P says to Q, J will sell you the camera. P wants three different types of camera of, of various prices. So this is a Offer will not call as a valid. Why? Because here one person is not entering in a contract with another person directly. Okay. This is not a valid con valid offer. Next. Number three. An auctioner display a refrigerator before a gathering in auction sale. So please make a note of it. An auctioner display a refrigerator before gathering in auction sale. You know what is called auction sale, right? Yellow so what is called auction sale once the pap once the people once the audience once the customers have got gathered 
then only they will show one one product for auction right here since before the customers have gathered the auctioneer displayed the refrigerator okay before gathering so this offer is not called as a valid so this is not a valid one okay this is a void next one yeah advertise ye advertise in the statement that he would pay rupees 200 to anyone who finds a return his lost dog so this one will come under two things one is essential elements of contract as well as then types of contract for example this one a advertises in a statement there are basically there are two types of contract we have discussed bilateral contract and unilateral contract so what is called bilateral contract when the two person entering in a contract that is called bilateral contract if the contract is between one to one is called as a bilateral contract whereas what is called unilateral if the contract from one person to many person from one offerer to many offeree that is called as a unilateral contract so what kind of a contract it is it is a unilateral contract okay because a has given an advertisement in a newspaper and he will pay a reward of 200 to whoever is find the lost dog okay so this is a unilateral contract okay next one sometime you can also consider this one as, as one of the quasi contract okay for example uh, you know what is called quasi contract right based on the situation when there is no intention to enter in a contract by uh, so and so person but the law will impose to you to enter in a contract so sometime if you find any kind of a goods then uh, you can return to the owner of the goods that is called as a quasi contract so you can take it in a, that point of view also so what is the answer since the given contract is coming under unilateral contract so what do you mean by unilateral contract when there is a contract between from one person to many person one person to many offer ninga podunga i have already told you while i am taking a class that you have to put one uh, like one picture like one offer to many offer we that is called unilateral contract okay so number next one next case study is c a b and c enter in a, enter into a contract under which a promises both b and c that if b will dig as garden he will give rupees 50 to c can c compel a to pay the money on big b's digging as garden according to the term of the contract see here see what is this in the sense for example anita okay a for anita for example so i am entering in a contract with bala i am entering in a contract with the bala and chitra c for chitra for example so here anita entering in a contract with a anita promised b and c i promised both bala and chitra then especially i informed that chitra if b dig my garden b dig my garden i will give money to you so is it a valid uh, contract is not a valid okay it's a, it's, it's it's like voidable contract why because actually the person i i should offer money to b because since the contract is initiated to b okay but here some confusion is going on here there is no clear contract here so this is called as a voidable contract okay from one person point of view is considered to be valid whereas from another person point of view considered to be void so this is a solution for this okay next one case study number 2 sorry case study number 3 a entered into a contract with the b for buying b's car as a agent for c without b's authority again please read the case study a entered into a contract with the b for buying b score as the agent for c without b's authority could you able to understand i want to buy one car from b okay i want to buy one car for b 
but actually the car is not for my own purpose i would like to buy car for for another person c okay but b do not know the major objective or main purpose of this content because b do not b is absent about this information could you able to understand i want i am entering a content with a b to buy b's car but actually the car is not for me i am going to buy for c okay b repudiate the contract before c comes to know of it what do you mean by repudiate cancel okay c subsequently ratify the contract and sues to enforce it and advise b what do you mean by this so repudiate b repudiate the contract means what before c actually i am entering a contract with the b for buying a car for c but c do not know that that i am entering in a contract with the b for that so since this is a contract where voidable contract why because from one person point of view considered to be valid for us from another person point of view considered to be wrong why because here b do not know actually that the a is entering in a contract on behalf of c so actually he wants to cancel the contract even the c also do not know that a is going to enter in a contract on behalf of c so what happened from one person point of view is considered to be valid whereas from another person point of view considered to be void so what is that advice b what is the answer what is this advice b so what do you have what kind of advertise uh, advertise you will give like you have to say clearly that as per the indian contract act when the two person entering in a contract both the person must be very clear about the terms and condition consent there is a concept is called consent pre consent and consent that means agreeing upon same thing in a same sense we have seen one topic under the essential elements of contract that means both the party must be uh, uh, clear about the objective purpose and the parties of a contract so here there is a absence of consent agreeing upon same thing in the same sense that is a absent in this contract next one a a merchant entrusted b his agent with a bill of lading related to the certain goods and instead b not to sell the goods for less than a certain price and not to credit not to give credit to b sells the goods to d for less than the price and gives d 3 months credit advice a so what is this this is a contract between the merchant okay and agent this is a contract which will come under agency so a is a person he is a uh, you know promisor and promise is a agent okay here a is a owner and b is a agent okay so a uh, a has given clear instruction to the b that i mean i uh, for example i want to sell my goods b is my agent in the sense i have given clear instruction to the b that you should not sell the goods less than the certain price and not to give a credit to i have given a clear instructions okay but what happened b sell these goods to d less than the quoted price so who is responsible the agent so automatically now read this the given case study will be coming under which concept do you think this contract uh, this uh, uh particular concept is coming under indian contract act no the given case study is coming under agency so once you go through the agency you can comes to know exactly under which topic it will come so there are rules i mean duties rights of agent and principle there is a concept once you read that you can able to understand and answer this case study so as per the uh, you know duties of the agent he has to obey and follow the instruction whatever is given by the merchant if he is not going to do that then he is liable to the particular person who entered in a contract that means he is a, a liable to the principal principal is a person who is initiating or assigning a contract to another person agent agent is a person who is working on behalf of the principal so this is a contract is coming under agency clear so first you have to trace out the given case study is coming under which concept so this is a concept which is coming under agency 
So here the agent is not obeying the instruction of the principal. So automatically the principal is having full uh, responsibility to cancel the contract and he can also sue against the agent for the compensate the price. That is called as a uh, agency, uh, duties and rights of the agent. That, are, that is one of the concepts we will study under the uh, upcoming classes. Okay. So I hope so you can be able to understand the given three case studies. Uh, thank you.